Hello, all my lovely Libra friends. This is Maxine Taylor, and I have your astrological forecast for the month of May. Before I jump into that, I want to tell you that uh, in answer to the questions that so many of you have been asking me, yes, I am offering a special right now during May. I'm offering um, a special price on my birth charts, six-month forecasts or 12-month forecasts, and or face-to-face -face sessions with me. My suggestion is go to my website, MaxineTaylor.com. Select the reading or readings you would like, fill out the form, and we're good to go. So, okay, now... Let me get this a little better. Well, whatever. Here is your beautiful forecast for the month of May. Um, Mars, the planet of action and energy. It's what we fight with and fight for. It's what comes first to us. It's in your natural house, the seventh of partnership. And so... Partnership is very, very important to you naturally. The one-on-one -on -one relationship, you're really good at it. Um, and you will attract to you now people who put themselves first. And so both you and those other people are going to be putting them first. Um, no problem with it if you enjoy it, uh, which you are... Um, a wonderful go-between, a wonderful arbitrator, uh, a medium. So your relationship, your one-on-one -on -one relationships with those who you care about, very strongly activated. If you are in sales, get out there and use this Mars to create the wherewithal that you want. Mercury, the blue planet, is in the seventh house too. And Mercury is no longer retrograde, but it's in the shadow of the retrograde until the 15th, which means it feels just like Mercury is retrograde. So you can start new projects by uh, while it's in the shadow, but since everything's so confused because it's in the shadow of the retrograde, uh, they may it may be hard to get them off the ground, so to speak. So tie up all the loose ends around you. On the 15th, Mercury moves into the eighth house of secrets and transformation and mundanely other people's money. And working with other people financially can be very uh, very good for you at this time. But it, what I love about the eighth house is you don't deal with effects, you deal with cause. You go to the cause of the problem or the issue. And whenever anything is in the eighth house, it is undergoing a transformation. So you're thinking Mercury is going to be in the eighth house um where it will, you know, move after the 15th. In other words, once it gets past the 15th, it will function as normally. And your thinking will undergo a change. You'll see things differently. Jupiter, the greater benefic, expands things. It deals with truth. It, drew, it deals with optimism. If you're dealing with other people's money, it can grow. And on the 25th, it moves into your ninth house of the higher mind, um, your principles. You get your answers in the eighth house and you put them to work in the ninth. The sun, the yellow planet, the giver of life. It's the center of our world. So your ego is undergoing a transformation and it shines a light on mutual funding. So... If you're investing with somebody else or another company, awesome time, perfect time to do so. On the 20th, 
the sun moves into the ninth house and you see more options open to you than you thought you had before. It deals with the ninth house is your higher mind. You're going to and long distance travel and the prince. We see the big picture. Um, eighth house, the little details. So the sun brings its own light. So keep your uh, keep your passport handy because you may want to take um, a long trip. I mean, this, that's traditional astrology. Go for it. Venus, the lesser benefic, is love and beauty and money. It's in your eighth house. So you've got uh, Venus, the sun, Jupiter, and Mercury, all in that eighth house of secrets and transformation and uh, mutual funding. Um, and your concept of love will be transformed. On the 23rd, it moves into the ninth house. And what you love then is to apply what you learned, <clears throat> excuse me, in the eighth house and apply it to your belief system. I, I really think if you could take a trip, a long distance trip, you would see even more if you can get away. Now, on the eighth, we have a new moon. It's in that eighth house. And this is a whole new energy system, a whole new energy pattern. This will help you with everything I just said to you about that powerful eighth house. Two weeks later, we have a full moon. That's when things come to a head. And that's on the 23rd. It's in three degrees of Sagittarius. New moon in 18, uh, on the 8th, in 18 of Taurus. Full moon, three Sag on the 23rd. This is your conscious mind. This is short trips. Uh, not any big philosophical whatever uh, discourses. It's just sharing your ideas with people. <clears throat> and if you are writing a book, this would be a great time to amp it up and talk about it. Publish it as soon as possible with the ninth house activated and then sell it. I love this. And if you're not writing a book, just share your ideas with other people. They will love hearing from you. So I hope you have a beautiful May. And I hope that you'll come back in June when once again, I take a look at your forecast. Till then, may the stars shine brightly on you and yours. Bye for now.